In this video, we're going to look at how to format charts. Some of these skills you should already know, so I'll be going over them fairly fast. The first thing is how to reposition various parts of the, of the chart. Every part of a chart is an actual object, so you can select that object and move it around just by clicking and dragging. The chart area itself can also be clicked and dragged to move that around. That's one way of moving them around. The other way is to use chart and then down to chart options to bring up the original chart options dialog box that you use when you created the object. Now some of the areas that we can look at here are legend, for example. This is the, the key area at the right hand side there that tells you what the series means. We can switch that on or off just by clicking and ticking in the box. Even if we do show it, we can choose where to put that, that object. So we can put it at the bottom of the screen, for example, and it positions it at the bottom of the screen. We put it at the top of the screen. So you can choose where that legend goes as it's gone to the bottom of the screen there. So that was chart, chart options. I'm going to choose not to show this. Let's have a look at data labels. Data labels are uh, a way of putting on each column of your chart uh, a label. And that label can either be the series name, in this case, the number of houses sold, or it could be the category name, the week number, or it could be the actual value. Some people like to put the values on there. The next thing we can look at is data tables. And by putting a tick in the box, creating a table underneath the chart that displays the actual values from the spreadsheet. I prefer not to have that showing. Have a good play around with all these objects. Choose how you want your chart to look. The next thing to look at is um, these data labels. Every object can be formatted in more than one way. We can select an object and then use the properties button to format that area that we've got selected. Or we can right click on an object and do format. Or we can choose the object from the toolbar. We can select the part of the chart that we want to work with from here. I want to choose the data labels. That's the labels that I've just selected in chart options to display. If we format those, remember right click to format or use the format, then we can format whichever area we've got selected in all kinds of different ways. We can change the colouring, we can change the line style, font style and size, number style, and every object has got a different number of tabs going across the top here. The one I particularly want to look at with data labels is the alignment. Because on the alignment, we can choose where those labels appear. Currently, they're on the outside end, which means they're outside that column. We can change that to the inside or in the center. Let's try it inside end and OK. And it puts it inside the column. So it's properties, choose the alignment tab, and choose where you want those selected. Put it in the middle. That's working with the data labels. Remember, every part of the chart can be modified in that way. So we could change on the axis label, for example, or we can change um, the color. That's now red. So you can do all that kind of formatting. Really, you should know how to do that part of it anyway. The next thing I want to look at is the scale of the axes. If we select the axes either by clicking on it or use the toolbar to select the value axis and then dial up the properties. Maybe you can right click or click on the hand. Different tabs going across, always have a good look at them. See what they all do. For example, we can display the ticks. These are the little marks at the end of the grid lines. It's just outside there. That's a, a tick mark. We can display those or not. It's a choice. You can alter the line thickness and style and colour of your axis. We can change the font style and size. We can change the numbering system. So, for example, we could change those numbers to currency with no decimal places. Changes it to currency. Have a look at that again. I'll put that back to general because I know I'm going to be doing something else in a minute. And also look at the alignment. We can change the alignment to give that text a little bit of. Of, a, of an angle. The one I particularly want to look at is on scale. What the scale is, is numbers appear on this axis. Currently, the numbers 
start at zero. That's this minimum value here. It's on automatic. It automatically works that out for you. It's on zero. The maximum is 200,000. It's picking that up from the data in the spreadsheet. It's got these intervals of 20,000 gaps. That's the major unit intervals of 20,000 gaps. We can alter these. Have a look at the chart. Just move that out of the way. You can see that there's area at the top there that's not been used and at the bottom there. We can expand this chart a little bit to make full use of the space just by altering these numbers. So instead of starting at zero, let's start that at uh, 20,000. And the maximum, instead of 20,000, let's put it at 180,000. We'll just change that to 180,000. Major units are currently at 20,000. Let's change that to 10,000 and see what effect this has. So hopefully you can see there, I'm now starting at 20,000, going up to 180,000 with steps of 10,000. And it's altered the way the, the bars themselves fill the chart. Another useful feature on those properties, so still working with the value axis and format, is the display units. There's none at the moment, but if we click on the drop down, we can see we can change it to hundreds, thousands, millions. This is to do with the numbers that we've got. We've got some big numbers here, 180,000. Makes that a little bit untidy. So what we can do is change the display units to thousands. Now this tick box just hides or displays that word thousands. I'm going to display the word thousands as an extra label on these axis. And then click on OK. And can you see what it's done? I'll just zoom in. It's added the word thousands and made those numbers a thousand times less. So instead of 180,000, it's now 180,000. Just makes the chart a little bit easier to read, perhaps. So that was selecting the value axis, either by clicking or dialing it up there, doing the properties, and then on the scale tab, adjusting the scale to the figures we want and deciding whether or not to alter the display units. Finally, you probably already know that you can alter the colouring of all these elements. Again, we can select um, a series, number of houses sold perhaps, change the formatting, make them red. Do that for any part of the chart. Do the background, the white area. That's selecting an area, adjust the properties and choose a colour. We can also use fill effects. I want you to have a little play around with this. There's only one thing I actually need to show you. You can have a little play around. You can have different colour schemes. You can alter the way the diagonals work, change the colours. Work on some presets. There's all kinds of different colour schemes there. You can add textures. So you can make your columns like a, a woven mat. You can add patterns with different colours. Well, the bit that I want to look at is adding a picture. You can select any picture on your computer. There's one of a tree and insert it. So that picture will now be inserted in whichever area of the, of the chart you are formatting. Click on OK and OK. And you can sound, see those columns are now being displayed as trees. So I was selecting the properties, fill effects, picture, select a picture on your computer. What you can also do is if you've already got a picture in your spreadsheet somewhere, and I've got one here, you can copy that picture just using a normal copy system. Go back to your chart, select the series you want to work with, and then paste, and it will imprint that picture onto your screen. So we've looked at a few things there. We're clicking and dragging the labels to run in the chart options, where we looked at things like data tables and data labels. We then looked at formatting the areas of the chart up here. We looked at changing the scale of an axis and whether or not to display units in a different system. And then finally, how to insert picture into your columns